Good evening, my name is Anna McKechnie. And I'm Luke Curran. Together, tonight, we present you Scarfy TV. On tonight's show, we get all political with our coverage of the Student General Annual Meeting. We celebrate New Zealand Music Month. Visit your favourite lecturer. And delve into the world of politics with Political Party of the Week. Students got their democratic fix this week at the OUSA Annual General Meeting. However, it wasn't all political procedure and bureaucracy, as Andy and Kushler found out. Opening with the standard procedure associated with meetings, the OUSA Annual General Meeting soon gave way to more pressing student issues. The Employment Relations Amendment Bill being of particles importance. OUSA is opposed to the bill on the basis that it denies basic employment rights and allowing employees to terminate employment for no reason. Students who carry out short-term and casual work over holidays are amongst the group of people most likely to be adversely off by this. The meeting directed OUSA to write submissions to the government as opposition to this bill. In other issues was the motion put forward from the floor for the decriminalisations of marijuana use on campus. Voting for this was particularly close with 25-4 and 28 against. Scarfy TV asked OUSA President Paul Chong what steps OUSA would have to take if votes were turned. Based on the constitution of, in running of SGMs, you can't actually um, put a motion from the floor and get it passed unless you have unanimous approval. Okay. And so unless everyone voted in favour of it, then it wouldn't have passed anyway. While close to 200 students would have attended the AGM, Chong acknowledges that this would not have been an accurate representation of Otago University students. The average student is largely quite apathetic of these, of these uh, issues. And so, just by definition, they wouldn't actually turn up to the SGM. And that is one of the motivations for having to try, or trying to set up a different type of body to make these decisions. Because obviously an SGM is, yeah, at this stage, with you know, how the size of the campus and the, the student body, probably is not the best mechanism for making decisions. Chong sees this as motivation for setting up a different type of body, such as Students' Representative Council, which was an operation back in the 1970s. It's not looking like anything's going to happen this year, yeah. but hopefully we'll have uh, the processes in place so that come next year, 2007, mm -hmm. we can have uh, you know, the Student Representative Council up and running. But that's, yeah, it's okay. definitely a wee way away. I'm Andy Spear for Scaffy Television. Since its inception, it's Music Week in 1997, New Zealand Music Month has become something of a cultural phenomenon. Nat and Jess talk to some of Dunedin's music gurus about what Dunedin does to celebrate the best month of all. Nearing the end of New Zealand Music Month, Dunedin has had its fair share of homegrown music coming through the airwaves. It's the best it's looked in the last 25 years. There's loads of bands, um, the rock degree is making things a lot better for students. There's certainly more talent out there than there ever was. Uh, New Zealand Music Week itself with 100% New Zealand, New Zealand Music is, is fantastic. We get a lot of requests for people wanting to hear songs that they wouldn't have heard for ages. And there's heaps of new music coming in. To show its support for New Zealand Music Month, Radio 1 dedicated a whole week solely to New Zealand Music. We just finished our New Zealand Music Week, which was uh, ran from last Monday the 8th to Sunday the 14th. And that was 100% New Zealand Music on air for the entire week and we had all New Zealand music giveaways uh, and live to ears every night which was uh, five local bands uh, playing on the station that was really awesome. Meanwhile refuel has been adding to the buzz with its wet lunches held every Wednesday but don't worry this doesn't mean you're getting saturated while eating your lunch rather you get a good dose of live local music. Last week the Oreos, a dub band from the Jordan, played during the Radio 1 and Refuel market day. Local music gurus have been largely impressed with this year's talent and assure us there's still more to come. Yeah, absolutely. There's uh, reorientation. You'll see lots of good New Zealand acts playing with that. And then later on in the year, there's more um, Battle of the Bands type things on. There's also uh, the Battle of the Bands coming up in the next couple of weeks. I'm Jess Lindsay for Scarfie Television. Last Friday saw the waters of the Leith filled with scrambling competitors in the annual Leith bike race. This Scarpy tradition is what could be called a bike race with a twist. Participants do not actually ride their bikes, but haul them down the length of the leaf in a battle of endurance, courage, and water confidence. A large number of local students showed up on the banks to show their support by throwing eggs and other miscellaneous objects. This was the last event of Capping Week and was the perfect end to what was a very enjoyable string of activities. The Regent Book Sale celebrated a milestone on Saturday when it celebrated its 25th anniversary. The Regent Theatre in the Octagon filled with thousands of people as they went in search of the perfect read. Not hard to find among 300,000 second-hand books. 
the majority of which sold for just 50 cents. 150 volunteers on 15 cash tills managed to control the massive influx of bookworms as they rummaged their way through a sea of books. This is the largest recognised book sale in New Zealand and over the years has raised millions of dollars to aid in the maintenance and development of the historical theatre. Today on Lecture of the Week, we sit down with Nick Laird from the Design Studies Department and have a chat to him about what he's been up to. Lecturer Nick Laird has significantly contributed to the development of the Design Department at Otago University. Uh, when I came it was one paper in something called Home Science, so it was me and 256 women from Hawke's Bay really, oh, that's okay. how it started, yeah. and then um, we slowly developed the undergraduate program and the postgraduate program, so when I stepped down from the leadership role it was a fully fledged department. His involvement in the department has proved to be crucial. Um, I'm actually um, an architect by training and then um, I, I've also had experience as a product designer and okay. um, also as an illustrator, so as far as design goes, I'm a bit of a slut across the disciplines. So. Oh, okay. Nick is particularly enthusiastic and encouraging about his students' abilities and the way they benefit from design. That's what I love about uh, this generation of students, that they do so many different um, disciplines within their degree and design is a sort of glue with, between yeah. film and media studies and marketing and so on and so forth. So. Scarfy TV was enlightened on how he uses his spare time for wholesome pursuits. Um, I like tramping, um, okay. but um, I would call it gentleman's tramps rather than uh, extreme tramps. Yeah, not yeah. that right. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah, not quite having the uh, you know lunch, a lunch hamper flown in, but almost there. Yeah, yeah, sure. I'm Anna McKechnie for Scarfy Television. In Political Party of the Week, Mandy talks to Andrew Tate of the International Socialist Organization about what influence the organization has over the nation's major political players. Established on campus in 1993, the International Socialist Organization are a group committed to workers' rights. Um, unlike the Labour Party, which is openly my campaigns as a business-friendly party, we think that uh, working people in New Zealand have been stuffed over the last 20 years, and uh, you can see that in the increasing working hours and like wages going down. The organisation has also taken a heavy stance against international issues, in particular opposing Bush's war in Iraq. If people don't actually make a noise, then people see it as something that's out of their reach that they can't do anything about. Um, but the reality is that in the end the Vietnam War was stopped by protest in America and the American army and of course the Vietnamese resistance. It would never have finished if it went for that. Um, and those, those anti-war demos, they also started off small. So that's, a, that's an important thing in terms of making a more humane world. Locally, the organisation has played a significant role in the mass occupation against rising fees and student debt. Well, our education policy is the same policy as what Labour and the Nats had 20 years ago, which is free education. Tate told Scarfy TV that education was essentially a free human right. Um, education is also basic human rights. It's part of our development. It's part of being able to, to participate in society. And we think that, you know, if humans are equal, then everybody should have a chance to go to have an equal chance at education. Mandy Doherty for Scarfy Television. Finally tonight, we are looking for someone to redesign our logo at Scarfy TV. If you think you've got what it takes, just drop it into the office at OUSA, care of Scarfy TV. From all of us here at Scarfy TV, Stay Scarfy, Dunedin! Dunedin.